Mark Platt. Now, Mark from Insight Consulting, uh, founded at Insight Consulting Services in January 2017. After 20 years in sales and business development, he knew that he had uh, uh, the ability to guide, advise and mentor others in the growth and development of their commercial operations. And Mark's been a member of our SVIP now, I think for, are you probably in your third year, would you say Mark, or fourth year? Actually, I think it's probably more like six feet. I joined- Oh my goodness, um, time flies when you're having fun. In fact, no, sorry, um, five years. I was 50, 2015 when I joined. Yeah, it when is. When I was working for Aon. That's right, because I remember you joined when you were in the corporate world at Aon. Yeah, and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, you, you joined as a, in a very different circumstance, didn't you? And very quickly yeah. moved on to being self-employed and launching your own brand, which again, you are Mr. East Midlands, I would say, in terms of social Thank network. You. you are everywhere. It's almost like, where's Wally on LinkedIn? Where is <laughs> Mark next, you know? Uh, is it in a, probably yeah. two events a day? You, you're actually the male version of me, I think. So, yeah. So. Oh, I, Fee, <laughs> I, 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 I take that as a huge compliment. Yeah, I, you know, I take that as a massive compliment. Oh, well, thank you. That's nice of you to say. So um, in terms of um, your uh, subject topic today then, Mark, you're going to be talking about business development versus sales in it for the long haul. So over to yeah. you. Yeah, thank you, Fee. Hello, everybody. Um, I did create some slides, but what I thought was I'd follow suit with everybody else. And Fee, I sent those over to you. It's probably going to be easier for me just to, to talk freely. And then yeah, if fine. you wouldn't mind, would you send the slides over to everybody yeah. afterwards? Yeah. Otherwise, I'll get, but I'd probably run the risk of getting bogged down with them. Um, yeah, but uh, COVID-19, uh, BD versus sales in it for the long haul. Um, I've heard that phrase a lot at the moment, in it for the long haul. Um, and can I just have a quick show of hands? Is that since we've been in lockdown, who has been sold to by people they don't know? Sold to, sold to, sold to, and sold again, um, which really has been the basis for my presentation for today. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're in a lockdown situation and people are selling and they're selling without understanding what the business is. They're, under, they're, they're selling to people without having any kind of relationship in place. Um, they're also selling to people that, like me, haven't really got an active client base at the moment. You know, I'm working with a select few individuals, but most of my clients, as Fiona said earlier on, you know, I do a lot of networking. I get people out and about into events. I, tell, I, I do in-market real-time mentoring on business development and working with people when they're face to face. You know, so that's really shrunk that market for me at the moment. So what I thought I would do was spend a bit of time talking to everybody today around the importance of BD over sales in the current climate. Um, I mean, none of us know how long lockdown is gonna, lo gonna last for. You know, they're talking about maybe three weeks, could be three months. Um, I think Paul mentioned before, could well mean that we go into a second phase of lockdown if, you know, it happens again. But what we do have on our time, what, what we do have on our hands at the moment is time. Um, so for business owners or leaders of business, if, if you take that in isolation, that's actually a luxury we don't usually get. So from a business development point of view, I think it's really important that we have a plan. Um, and the basis of most plans for business owners when we're looking at generating revenue is a commercial strategy of some kind. You know, so spending some time at the moment looking at you know, vision and mission is, is why you're doing it. You know, what are you, what, what are you gonna do to achieve it? Um, you know, I know Paul, you've mentioned before around working, working from the end result backwards. Um, this is not massively dissimilar. You know, setting some, where, where do you wanna be in 12 months or three years? Um, from from now, look at now as ground zero. In twelve months' time, where, where do you want to be? Because we're in we're in unprecedented times at the moment. You know, this is really really uncertain place to be, and there are no answers. So though your plan might not be conclusive, is that actually if you're not planning, you're planning to fail. You know, have something to work with, tweak it as you go along, tweak it as the market develops and we come off we come off lockdown. Make sure, though, that you're setting those objectives. Make sure you're setting um, or you understand your values, because when the time is right, your values are going to underpin what you're selling. 
you know as a business owner you know your service your experience are a given you know it's your values people are buying into so make sure that you know what they are and that you're you're living and breathing them and don't forget your action planning you know whether or not it's a it's a SWOT analysis or whether or not it's a very simple set of bullet points that you're working to um, make sure that you're doing that and revisiting them I mean in the current climate maybe do a pestle take a look at some economic and political factors around how that might be affecting your business that's quite a technical way to look at business development but actually it might give you some clarity and some vision as to oh well, actually I've looked at that now I understand the market a little bit deeper so actually points a and b on my strategy might not be so relevant because i understand these economic factors um i just wanted to cover off as well you know the difference between business development and sales some of you might go oh we know that but there are people i talk to that go is that not the same thing you know in the current climate business development for me you know as my fellow speakers have all talked about from marketing brand you know talking to your clients, to your customers, um, developing those relationships. That's business development. You know, that's part of business development. But don't just be isolated in the fact that business development is external towards your audience. You know, business development is also around your own business. So as we mentioned on just a moment ago, make sure that you're developing your business and your brand as much as you're then developing your market and the relationships with your customers and your prospects. I think it's really key at the moment as well. If you are going to speak to prospects, get to know them. Don't sell them anything. You know, what, how, we don't know what their trading conditions are. We don't know if they're in financial difficulty. We don't know if they furloughed all their staff. We don't know if they're, you know, that they might be making redundancies. They might be going into liquidation. But take some time to get under the skin of these people that are in the business and get to know them. Become a friend in business. Don't just become somebody that's selling something, you know. Um, I'm not sure who mentioned it earlier on, but, you know, be somebody that these guys are going to remember in three months. Go the extra mile if you can. I know that's difficult in, at the moment, but, you know, what is it that you, what is it you can do that, that, that's different? In the, in the current climate, there are, there are lots of different ways that we can be recognised. You know, you could be crazy, wacky, innovative whatever it is you know whatever it is that suits your person your business but take the time to don't forget your clients don't forget the people that you've worked with in the past don't forget the people that you know might have stopped trading with you because of covid19 and pick the phone up send an email but don't sell anything to them you're just gonna piss them off excuse my French, you know, just make sure that you are keeping lines of communication open and that you are the person that they can confide in, that they can have a sensible business dialogue with and, you know, you make sure that you've got that commercial relationship in place once this lockdown and crazy, crazy period of time is over. Sales, you know, if you are in a role where you have to sell something because you know we all we're all selling at some time and some of us are salespeople and we have to sell something whether it's a service or a product try and have a consultative sales approach at the moment um selling outright on the phone on email or linking in with someone and sending them a sales pitch in the current climate is not going to do you any favors you know people are just going to go who's this guy um you know do your research you know if you can get on the phone to them ask questions and more importantly listen you know the best tool of a salesman or his ears um you know I, I have this battle with people all the while around sales oh you've got the gift of the gap you can sell this no 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 the best sales people i know are those that know how to listen absorb what the person in front of you is saying digest it articulate it back and then as the, as the salesperson, it's your job to teach. This often gets overlooked. You're the expert, teach them, guide them, offer a solution. Talk to them about similar things, that similar areas you've worked in before where you've offered a similar solution. Give examples, give them confidence, demonstrate your credibility, but don't sell them anything. You know, Let your credibility and your integrity do the selling for you. And keep the relationship alive. Um, I think it's really important, you know, bearing in mind 
what we've just spoken about with business development and sales is to then take a look at, okay, well, who am I going to talk to and why am I going to talk to them? So you might decide that, and on the slides that hopefully Fiona can email out to you, you'll see that I've created a slide called Mechanisms to Help. You know, the first, the first of these six pillars are, you know, looking at your sales history, lost and lapsed clients. Well, you might not be dealing with them at the moment. You might have stopped dealing with them. You might have lost them some time ago to a competitor. Well, now is a great time just to pick the phone up. Be a friend, ask them how they're doing. You know, Vic, I think you said earlier on, Victoria, around, you know, be that person, ask them how they're doing, you know, get under the skin of it. Um, it's a great time to do that. You know, do some market analysis. You know, we've got time on our hands. Find out how big your market is or how small it is. You know, this is similar to the recession in 2008 when the market consolidated. You know, that will happen slightly at the moment. Find out who's not now a competitor. Find out how big your customer base is or how much that shrunk. So you can really then define a plan moving forwards of how you're going to move forwards. Competitor analysis, you know, as I just mentioned, some of your competitors might have stopped trading, you know, okay, so that's less, less people in the pond. Um, but you never know, some of the bigger boys might have made people redundant. They, those guys then might set up on their own. So in, in, in fact, you might have more competitors. Um, it's really important that you find out who's operating in your space and who you need to know. Um, don't forget to do your forecasting. You know, um, I've done lots of seminars at the moment, doing lots of conference calls. And the one thing that's been quite consistent is in this time, have a forecast, cash flow forecast, three months. You know, what's your revenue? What's your projected revenue? What are your outgoings? What do you think your projected revenue might be in six months time? You know, even if it's for your own sanity, just understand where those sales and revenues are coming from. Tactical positioning and planning is the next thing you know, I wanted to, to run by. Don't forget that, you know, there are businesses out there that you want to deal with that will be dealing with other people. As with any time, um, any time in the world, still, still be that, um, still be the second, you know, the second, the, the, the person that they can come to, tactical positioning, be the second person. You know, they might, you know, from a, an insurance point of view, they might want to sense check something. You know, from a marketing point of view, they might want a second opinion on something that, that their agency has done. Whatever it is, you know, just always make sure that you're number two in line. So if something happens or goes wrong, that, you know, you're the person that they call. Um, and we've mentioned it before around furloughing, redundancies at the moment. There's going to be, some businesses are going to find themselves with a cash gap when, Lockdown finishes and the world goes back to normal and you start trading. There's three timestamps at that point. You know, lockdown finishes, your business might not actually start trading for four, eight, 12 weeks and you might not get any money coming back in for 90 days, whatever days. So there's a cash gap. Understand how you're going to deal with that, how you're going to deal with your people, how you're going to make sure that people can be paid, that you can make sure that you can actually deliver what you say you're going to do. You know, I think that's something that's probably a little bit under, under thought of at the moment, but it could be quite critical if you've got a number of people that are working for you. The last slide that I'm going to talk about, um, and um, hopefully Fee, you can send this out to everybody, um, is a flow diagram around what good business development looks like post COVID-19. But there's some things on here that will really help you get into the habit or give you a, or put you in a position whereby, you know, you're in a, um, you're in a good position to start trading, developing more relationships and really defining and moving forward your commercial strategy. You know, making sure that, you know, you're, you're looking at who your market is. Have you got good customer satisfaction? What are your customers or your clients saying about you at the moment? You know, there's plenty of time to be getting those testimonials in. Um, looking at retainer contracts, you know, are you on retainer contracts at the moment? Is that, what, is that what's keeping you afloat? Or do you want to get more retainer contracts in post lockdown? Really looking at sort of defining that. Um, how can you demonstrate your industry expertise? You know, if you're an expert in your field, think about innovative, wacky, crazy, you know, likable ways that you can get your credibility and integrity out there into the marketplace. Um, 
And then once lockdown's finished, you know, look at your community engagement. You know, um, we said we talked about Mark earlier on doing charity work. Um, I've recently joined the board of trustees for a Leicester based charity um, and raise quite a bit of money for Loros, which is a Leicester based hospice and hope against cancer. You know, these are community, it's all CSR community engagement. You're doing great things, helping good causes, but it helps get your business brand out there, helps you interact and talk and, in, and network with other people whilst doing great things for great causes. Partnerships, you know, we've all got partnerships. You know, I've, there's a number of you here on the call that, you know, hi to those of you that I haven't sort of said hello to personally, but you know, um, those partnerships are key whether or not it's a friendship partnership. So, you know, you, you lose a client, it's like, fucking hell, who can I ring? I need to tell somebody about this. Or, you know, you wanna, you, you wanna generate a new partnership with somebody where you might be able to do some referrals or talk about business, mutual business opportunities. You know, those, those partnerships are key for small businesses, owner managers, um, to help drive their, their business forwards. Marketing activities, you know, there's some of the best marketeers um, in the East Midlands on the call here today. So I'm not going to touch on that. Speak to them, you know, they'll be able to help you. Um, and guest posting, you know, get your, if you can, get yourself on an event like this. Get yourself on a blog or a podcast or the radio. Do something where, you know, you can demonstrate again your credibility with other professionals um, and really help drive the message and your business forwards. That for me is the, the essence of business development. It's don't sell anything, you know, you're developing a market, you're developing relationships, long-term commercial and strategic relationships that will pay dividends at some point. The sell comes later, you know, and that's a different skill set. Might not always be you that's doing the closing, you know, but the sell is the transaction. Yeah, um, wait for the transaction. The development needs to come first. Well, I think that's me. Um, thank you. Great. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much for that.